I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here at Devox UK and uh, interviewing Arun. Arun, hi. Hello there. Uh, so Arun, tell us, what, what do you do at Oracle? Uh, my name is Arun Gupta. I am a technology advocate uh, working for Oracle. I'm responsible for Java EE evangelism, so I literally go around the world, talk about Java EE and different Java technologies at Oracle, um, and that's what I do. So you have a new uh, release coming out, right? Or is Java EE 7. Tell us about it. So that what is, is correct. new? So we do have a new release of Java EE 7 coming out, um, and that is scheduled in the Q2 of 2013. Uh, there are a few big themes as part of the release. Um, first of them is boosting your productivity. Um, the second theme is about embracing HTML5. So in terms of boosting productivity, what we are doing is we're giving developers a chance where they can improve their productivity many folds, several ways. You know, we are providing you opportunities to write less boilerplate code with using dependency injection pretty heavily. We're giving a lot more defaults out of the box. We're also giving a lot more richer functionality um, as part of the platform itself. Then in terms of HTML5, the big themes over there really are providing an API to build a WebSocket-driven application. Um, you can also create, a, you know, when you're building your application, in that application, you don't need to bundle any JSON jars. All that functionality now is part of the platform, which allows you to make your applications much leaner and portable that way. And we're also introducing HTML5-friendly markup. So a lot of work happening in the Java EE7 platform, and a lot of specifications have been revved, and new specifications being added to make all of this happen. And um, the community has been also very active. Can you t tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So one of the big aspects of Java E 7 is really about transparency and community participation. Well, in transparency, we're all following the JCP 2.9 rules, which requires us, you know, your active public website, um, open Jira, um, act uh, open expert group discussion aliases, so anybody can watch it and participate, all of that. And then in terms of community, we have several activities going on. So adopt a JSR effort has been particularly very, very successful for us. I mean, we are at DevOps UK. London Java community has been very instrumental in organizing some hack days for us. Um, then Belgian Jug, you know, Chennai Jug, um, Jug from all around the world, So Java. All of these Jugs together have introduced or organized hack days where they have taken a particular technology or a bunch of technologies and organized hack days, downloading the specs, reviewing the Java docs, building applications, providing feedback on them, filing bugs. So that has been tremendously successful. The other community effort that we started was FishCat. Now fish coming from glass fish, which is the logo that you see here, and cat standing for community acceptance testing. So this is again a community-driven effort where we are, we are encouraging folks to participate in this effort download the promoted bills because GlassFish being the reference implementation also has some features above and beyond Java E 7. So we are asking the folks to test those features. And again, a good build, a well-tested build helps everybody. So this is where you know, we are seeing a lot of participation from the community and then they're filing bugs on that as well. So what are some of the applications that were built during those uh, community events? Right. So one of the applications that was built during the uh, adopt JSR effort specifically was around JSR 356. Now JSR 356 is about Java API for WebSocket. So the Belgian guy specifically, they built an application called as Tic-Tac-Toe. It's a very common knots and crosses game. As part of the game, the, what they said is, we're going to build a WebSocket endpoint using the JSR deployed on GlassFish. And then they built a HTML5 client for this, they built an iOS client for this, a Android client for this, and a traditional web client for this. And all these clients were able to talk to the backend running on GlassFish using JSR 356 APIs. Similarly, you know, in uh, Chennai Jug, they're building an Urban Travelers application. Applications is just one part of you know, what was coming out of this adopted JSR effort. The other part of this whole effort was really these jugs, you know, like 20 jugs that are participating in the Adopter JSR effort, they're becoming sort of our extended evangelism team 
for example, Morocco jug, you know, we, we were being invited by Egypt, Egyptian Java user group to talk about a particular technology. We could not go. So these guys went for us and delivered this presentation for us. So it's beautiful, actually, working out, you know, truly thinking locally, acting globally. Wonderful. Anything else you would, you would like to share with us? <clears throat> sure. A um, few more things that I want to talk about the Java E7 platform itself. So there are four brand new JSRs that are coming as part of the platform. So there is JSR 356, Java API for WebSocket, 352, which is batch applications, 353, which is JSON processing, and 236, which is concurrency utilities. JMS, uh, which is 343, is being revised pretty heavily to just catch up with the platform. JAX RS 2.0, tons of new features coming in there, lots of other specs getting revised. So Java E7 is getting a major, major facelift and is getting ready to be released pretty soon. Glassfish is the implementation for it. Um, all the features are baked in today. You know, we have tons of material available for you to get started. We would love to get your feedback. You know, give us your feedback. We would love to hear it and make it successful, not just for us, but for you, most importantly. So do you have a link for people to go to? Absolutely. So I think the key links that you want to remember, if you want to look at the implementation part of it, glassfish.org is your primary link. You go to there, you can download the Glassfish promoted builds from there. Or if you want to look at the specifications, go to javaee-spec.java.net. You know, all our projects are completely transparent. You can see the interim spec drafts. You can check out the expert group discussions. All of that from that um, uh, page itself.